Good morning. How are we today? Uh, I get to do a little bit of the non-exciting stuff here this morning. Uh, some computer work catching up on, making sure that some of our end-of-the-year records are uh, updated and correct, and that we pay the taxes by the end of the year that we have to pay by the end of the year and all of that kind of good stuff. So I'm working on that. Brock's here. He's working in the shop. We'll go check in with him. Welcome back. Just got here. Um, Nathan told me a couple things to do. We're going to take the chains off the combine. There's three main chains. First one we're going to do is this unloading auger. It's the biggest one on here. Um, we got to take it off for a couple reasons. We clean the chain every year, just kind of inspect it. And the second reason is this right here. That bracket up there, the tensioner, uh, is bent. Um, Obviously this combine's a brand new combine, so it's still under warranty and they want that part back. So since they gave us this one under warranty, and we gotta send that one back, we're gonna change it now while we take the chain off and inspect it. So let's get after it. So this bracket here is a pretty simple design. Pretty much just two nuts jammed together to hold the tension on it and let them go up the threads. Hopefully it gets past this point here that's bent. I don't know. Yeah, there you can see it's bent. So hopefully it gets up there past the point that it's bent enough that we can slide this out of here. We're probably gonna have to take this sprocket off, but we'll see what we can do. Now that we got that tensioner loose, the chain's pretty loose. I found the master links up here. We're gonna take those out and take the chain off. It'd probably be easier doing that than trying to fight that tensioner while the chain's still on it, so. We'll take the chain off and then take the temperature and replace it. So, like I said, Brock's working on uh, changing out some chains here. That tensioner arm is bent, so we got to get it out of there, put the new one in. Um, normally, I would change chains, all of this one and the other two, every year on the combine. Um, when we bought the 680, the first year I did not change one of the chains, and it broke on me halfway through the next fall. So. I've always just done it. However, we've only got half a year's use on the combine this year. So I kind of wanted to inspect these, see what kind of shape they're in, see if we got like that one there. We got some links that aren't really free moving. Um, and how much slop is in it, how much curvature we can get in this chain. I mean, that's not horrible but that's quite a bit so i think we're going to try and clean this one up see if we can get all them frozen links uh freed up and um put it back on there and run it another year i'll just probably make sure i've got them on hand so that if we have one break it doesn't shut us down for a long time we can just get it fixed and uh go from there yeah and just like that the unloading auger chain is off and the new or the old can you see picture. the bend she's just a little bend isn't she yeah that's why she's under warranty the new arm the tensioner arm is on and it is loose but we still have to put that chain on after we clean it and inspect it and that's what we're on to next so we got the first chain out it's the big unloading auger chain. I laid it on some cardboard because we are going to soak it in some WD-40. Hopefully it loosens up these tight uh, chain links there. If you can see that, it's kind of stuck up. Once we dose it in WD-40, then we will let it sit for a little bit, go do something else and come back and try to work these kinks out and clean it up. So I'm back working on the unloading auger chain. Right there we have a link that's sticking. I've been kind of working it a little bit. It's been coming out but there's been a couple along this whole chain. It's not too bad. Again we only have 200 hours on this chain. 
I did take the re-thresher re chain off on the other side and it's in the oil room soaking in diesel right now. I'm gonna wipe it down or clean it up after I get done with this, but we're gonna keep working with this chain and hopefully get it done here real quick. So that's the re-thresher chain right there. It goes around, comes down, goes back up towards the pulley up in there. Um, that chain is clean, sitting right there. I sprayed some dry film on it. It cleaned up really easy, really good. The unloading auger chain is a different story. I'm letting that soak for a little bit longer. We're gonna take off this feeder house chain. This chain we're not actually gonna put back on. Um, we're gonna leave it off once we get it cleaned up because there's still a whole lot of crap up in the feeder house. And with this chain off, we can spin the feeder house chain and hopefully spit some of that stuff out. So we are gonna clean this one up though. So I'm going to take it off and get it soaking. So there's the feeder house chain. Does have a curve to it. But like Nathan said, we're going to run another year. It only has 200 hours on it. Uh, we'll see how the links look. You got a couple sticking. Another one. A couple more. There's another one. Another one. So there's quite a few on this one. I'm gonna let it soak. We're gonna clean it up and test it again. While everything's still soaking, we're gonna get back in here and clean out some of this crap in the combine. Before we get more water and get everything floating and stuff, while it's all settled, we're gonna try to get as much as we can out. So I know you really can't see it that well, but I've made progress. I've been working on it for about 20 minutes. They're getting there, getting cleaner. Now I just gotta get that water out of the front. I got most of the main crud off. All of them are pretty clean. So now I just gotta get the water out of the front. I did drill some holes in it yesterday to help drain it, but it just keeps getting plugged. So I just gotta help the water go through. Well, I spent some more time on the computer. We'll see how Brock's doing. How we doing, Brock? Yeah. Are we cleaning? Trying to get the water out. Yeah. He got that piece in, so that's good. Oh, and look, he cleaned up our chain. Kind of, sort of, you got a ways to go. A lot of kinks in it? Yeah. Well, the idea is to spray it down and get it cleaned up and then try and lube it up. So you might want some WD-40 or even some diesel fuel to dissolve the crap out of it and then lube it. Okay. Oh, you got the other chains off? Yeah. Right. Peter House chain soaking. Okay, good deal. So he got this uh, chain that drives the feeder house off of there. So now we can rotate this by hand and uh, inspect it a little bit. Just make sure that everything is there, nothing's bent. We don't have too much trouble with these anymore since they went to these cast slats, but like that one's got a bunch of dirt in it. We can clean that off. So we just need to take a look at it and make sure everything looks good. We're still like, you know, really low hours on this combine, so there shouldn't be anything with any real issues. But like I said, we're just checking stuff. So Brock's gonna keep working in there on that, cleaning cleaning those chains up and just cleaning the combine, get the hose out some more and uh, rinse some other areas and stuff down. He was getting some out of the inside where the, some of the water potted in there from what we were doing yesterday. But uh, I have to run and uh, take care of some stuff here late this morning and over lunch. So I'm gonna go run some errands and I will be back this afternoon and we'll see how or what else is going on in the combine there. So I'm done cleaning out that for a little bit. Something different back to the chain. What I've decided is I'm gonna wind it all up and put it in the, well, now it'll be a soaking pan instead of a catch pan. And we're gonna put diesel in there. It, these links are just not coming loose. So we're gonna soak it overnight to break up some of the dirt and stuff. 
and then work on it again whenever we get to it. Gonna be back to cleaning the feeder house chain. Should be easy, wasn't that bad. And we're gonna leave it off. But here, parts washer, get it out of the soaking and start scrubbing. I got the feeder house chain all cleaned up. Again, looking pretty good. But again, it should for a chain that only has 200 hours on it. I'm gonna spray some dry film uh, lubricant on it and let it sit. We're not putting this one on today. We might put that one on uh, a little bit later. But the eh, clock up there says 11.46. It's time for lunch. Nathan's not here. Mark's not here. I guess I'm making the rules. Hello. Back from lunch. Uh, just checking out these chains. They look really good. Very clean. We might put the Rethrusher chain back on here and the unloading auger chain is still soaking we're gonna again leave that soak overnight probably and then we're probably gonna move on to cleaning the cab that's a task in itself um, Nathan is probably the dirtiest person to clean up after as far as in the cab Mark's clean I try to think I'm clean and Phil is pretty clean but Nathan it's a different story this is what I'm talking about behind the seat in the combine crackers I wonder who they're from Nathan okay well I am back from running my errands Brock's got chains cleaning look at look at he's cleaning off the floor how we doing Brock okay good He's got that big uh, unloading auger drive chain soaking in some diesel fuel. It was worse shape than we had initially thought with some of the links being froze up and just not real flexible like you want it to be. So we're going to soak it in some diesel fuel and try and get it to dissolve all the dirt and stuff out of it. And then we'll try and lube it up and spray it down real good um, before we put it back up there. And if we don't get it freed up, we'll just replace it. If it's going to be in bad shape, we're not going to put it back on. So, yeah, I suppose I should help do a little cleaning on this. So just got done wiping it out, probably for the first time, and probably have to do it a couple more times. Didn't hit the windows, but we're gonna be in and out of here a couple more times. I know we gotta lower the feeder house and probably move it. But got the floor wiped down. It's not perfect, but it's it'll do. I wiped down the walls. And it's actually not looking too bad for the first time. I climbed up on top of the engine compartment and got the hose up there and started hosing stuff down. And now we have a bunch more dirt down here that needs to be rinsed off. Your turn. All right, um, Brock would like the feeder house put down on the combine. And he gave me a towel to put on the floor so that I don't get the nice pretty cab all dirty. So as you wish, Brock. <sighs> Um, we may have some starting issues here because this is the first time it's been started since the fuel filters were changed. So we'll let the key on for a second, let them prime up, the computer boot up. But all we need to do is start it and lower the feeder house. So we'll try it here. Look at that. We just blew a bunch of water out of the fan with the radiator that I had gotten in there. Ready? some dirt and stuff inside the feeder house and we want to put it on an angle so that it runs downhill and out the front rather than collecting inside of it. We're at the top side of the feeder house to try to wash things down and there's a lot of crap up here. Let's hope they will wash out. We got a bit out of there. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's getting cleaner every minute. It's getting a little bit cleaner. Okay, I think we are um, about done washing on the combine. Brock's taking off. See you, Brock. Yeah. 
He'll be back on Friday. We're going to polish the combine, the outside of it, on Friday. But we've got basically everything underneath and inside uh, washed down as good as we're going to get it. Um, we were going to throw the concave back in there, but one of the boxes, they call it, one of the pieces on the concave was bent a little bit. So I ordered a new one. We're going to wait for that to come before we put it in there. Um, so we got to put those chains back on. The couple that we're going to leave soak. Um, and then that's pretty much it for the combine. So that's... The nice thing about a new combine is you just don't have a lot to do. It's just some cleaning and stuff. So um, tomorrow I might spin it around and pick the corn head up and start working on that a little bit. We've got to take some of those gathering chains apart and everything and uh, do a little bit more work to that. But Brock will be back on Friday for a little while. So we're going to plan on, on uh, wiping the shields down again with the um, foam cannon and then putting the, the spray on ceramic stuff on there. I'm pretty sure is what we're going to do. So he said he would come as long as I helped him because he didn't want to do it all by himself. Fair. It's a big combine. Phil is uh, taking one of our trucks to the local truck shop mechanic place um, to have them inspect it and do the uh, DOT inspection. Yeah, all of that. And he wanted me to come pick him up, so I'm going to go do that. Whew. Having soybeans still standing and getting snow done is not ideal. Yikes. It's that time again. Time for me to go home. So thanks for watching today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm not sure what exactly the plan is for tomorrow. Brock's not coming tomorrow. Um, so we may pick that corn head up and start working on that. We may not. I may do some seed business stuff tomorrow. I'm trying to find the GoPro that Brock had so that I can get all the footage for you. Anyway, um, Friday we'll we got other stuff going on, like I told you. So if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Oh, that does remind me. A couple of things I wanted to comment on on the video from a couple of days ago, the, the planning for 21 video. Uh, the comments turned rather political there. That was not the intent. Um, yes, uh, the former administration and the current administration's um, policies have impacts on commodity prices and input prices and both good and bad for both of them. So uh, that was in no way a political discussion by me. I'm not saying one thing or the other uh, as far as that goes. Um, the, the other thing that uh, came up a lot in those comments was uh, about switching crops and growing something different. And uh, like especially where we didn't get the wheat planted, could we plant spring wheat? Could we plant barley or oats or some other crop or canola or I don't even remember what some of the other suggestions were. And while technically possible, we don't have a market for any of those. Um, there's there's not really any barley grown around here that I could find somewhere to sell it for. Um, and same thing with spring wheat. Uh, we grow soft red winter wheat here. I do not believe that there is a soft red spring wheat. And so the type of wheat that we would have to grow to plant spring wheat would be different than what our markets here uh, normally buy and accept. And so to find somewhere to sell this stuff would be really, really difficult. And uh, it just doesn't make sense. So um, not really an option. Uh, it's it's going to stick with corner beans one way or the other. And we're just going to figure it out and have to price stuff out on the input side and try and uh, manage things the best that we can, you know? So anyway, just a couple of things on that that I noticed from the comments. So um, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow, probably, tomorrow or Friday. Have a great night.